The sous chef at this one star restaurant is Mathieu Otto. Do you change? No, you turn it off. For a year and a half, he went through all the selections to represent France at the Bocuse d'Or, one of the world's most prestigious gastronomy competitions. Sauerkraut in the middle. At the age of 35, this man from Sargamines has carved out a small local reputation for himself by working with local produce. Potatoes. Being able to make dishes that you love, that you enjoy eating with your family and sharing. My origins lie in my grandmother's cooking, the one I love, from my grandfather, who was a fan of vegetable gardening. He passed on to me his passion for vegetables and his respect for the product. He's been dreaming about the competition for 15 years, since he entered culinary school. When people talk to us about the Bocuse d'Or, I thought it was already making us dream. However, I'm sure that everyone in my class and even today's high school students thought that would be nice, that would be cool, but some of them have probably forgotten about it or thought that's not for me and it's always been in the back of my mind and it puts a little spice back into this side of the kitchen. In a few weeks time he'll be up against candidates from all over the world, all trained to win. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Argentina. Australia, 24 nations, Belgium, and two days of competition. In front of an audience of 2,000 fans. Months of training for a five and a half hour event. All of them must make a vegetable chartreuse as a starter. And a rack of veal as a main course. To decide between them, an armada of referees. 26 gastronomy professionals who assess aesthetics, taste, and skills. behind the friendly atmosphere. A battle between stables of champions with colossal budgets. <laughs> Facing the French from Sargemin, the Americans from Napa Valley in California, the defending champions, pulled out the big guns. A Michelin three-star chef, Matthew Kirkley, 35. The competition is so important to him that he sold his San Francisco home to be closer to his training center. He's also sent his wife and daughter to stay with his mother-in-law for three weeks to focus. Hi, honey. How are you? I'm good, and you? Oh, I'm tired, and how's my little girl? She's with mommy now. She's giving her a manicure for her birthday. Violet would like to show you the results. You'll have to call them on video. Yes, that would be nice, but I'm driving now. I'll call him later. I love you. I miss you. Okay, I love you. It's not easy for family life, but we're in the last stretch. His HQ, the kitchens of the CIA, the Culinary Institute of America. He trains there 14 hours a day with a team of 10 people. How are they doing? All are employed for 18 months by a private foundation that paid 3 million euros to win the Bocuse d'Or. An army of little hands under the orders of chef Robert Sulatiki. This day, real-time training. Parsley, here we go. Do you have the lemon juice with you? Not yet. I won't tell you twice. We oui, chef. Because if we're already late here, we might as well stay home. Robert was already the winning candidate's coach two years ago.
The oysters, the oyster moose. Time task, a short and precise order. 30 seconds. It's like being in the Marines. Eight minutes out of 15. Chartreuse is starting now. Mathieu has 20 minutes to prepare this seafood tartare with tarragon, which will be used to make his chartreuse a vegetable and shellfish cake. You've got a nine minute head start. If Mathieu keeps up... Come on, Mimi, hurry Mimi? up. The 24-year-old assistant who will go to Lyon with him struggles with the decoration. A fake eggshell reconstituted with rye. And a mixture of green thumbs called salad pastoral. According to Jordan, the assistant coach, Mimi is 12 minutes late. How many do I need again? Sorry? How many do I need? 16 and 16. I need two plates of 16. Plan extra every time. That way we can remove what's broken. We'll have to think of a new method. We've had to change the way we work lately. That's why she's late. She gets stepped on to get to the oven. The dishes weren't washed on time. We had to organize the space better. She's got to remember all this new organization. If she has to pee too bad, she doesn't think about it. She doesn't have the time. Jordan and Mimi were already working with Mathieu at a three-star restaurant in San Francisco. They all quit to prepare for the competition. A year and a half of work for an undisclosed salary, paid by the foundation. The subtleties of the recipe are also secret. We were only allowed one hour of filming. Americans fear spying. Apart from his daily training sessions, Mathieu leads the life of an ascetic. The title of best chef in the world would be the crowning glory of a faultless career. Born in Baltimore on the east coast of the United States, the son of a blue-collar worker, Mathieu did not do well at school. He discovers cooking by chance at the age of 15. My father told me to get a move on and find a job. So I ended up as a dishwasher in a small restaurant. And one evening I was asked to help out in the kitchen. I immediately fell in love with the job. I loved the energy and effort it demanded. And it felt good to be supervised. I felt much better in the kitchen than at school. Two years of cookery school, then his first job as a chef, first in brasseries, then in palaces. In 2015, he is in charge of a fish restaurant in San Francisco and makes a name for himself with highly aesthetic creations. Flounder rolled in vegetable slices and cancal butter, cod with English peas and wormwood. Mussels with bacon cannelloni style. Last year, Mathieu wins big, three stars, just before resigning. At the restaurant, I only had a few hours a week to create new dishes. I also had to manage suppliers, staff and service, and all the preparation beforehand. I really wanted to devote myself solely to creation, without any other barrier. And that's what the Boku's door is all about. I'll cut them in half again. Creativity. The best weapon for Mathieu, who doesn't have the same resources at his disposal. He trains in the back kitchen of the restaurant. His employer authorizes him to rehearse during working hours. With Louis, an assistant. White wine, garlic, shallots. While the American has four months of intensive training, Mathieu will soon only have three weeks in Paris. He is fine-tuning an element of the garnish. It's thick. 
a cylinder made of dough, he'll fill with an Alsatian curiosity. Those are... what? I'm not from here. I don't have the right pronunciation yet. In addition to these Buis plates, horseradish balls, a plant with peppery notes, the Alsatian wasabi. This is a horseradish cream that I put in the freezer. This is a glaze made with clear veal juice, very clear, almost translucent. And in it, we put parsley puree. So it's going to give us that slightly marbled effect because that's what the bocuse d'or is all about. The garnishes have to be shiny, generous, and gourmet. What's interesting about this kind of garnish is that you're pretty free. You just have to be imaginative and try to do what you really want. Two hours work for this garnish alone. If the aesthetics please the cook, the taste still needs to be improved. I think the tile with the onion and the buve is really in the spirit of what needs to be done. It's all about seasoning and adjusting. Mathieu doesn't have much time to devote to his family and friends. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Just a few days before he leaves for Paris for his final rehearsals. It's Tarine and beer night. We've got everything we need to be happy. Super. Oh. Anne, his little sister, also a mechanic, would never have imagined that this inveterate food enthusiast since childhood would one day be tempted by the refinements of haute gastronomy. When my mother cooked on Sundays from time to time, he would, we'd ask questions how she did it, we'd watch, but otherwise cooking was more about eating than cooking. Cheers. Thanks to all of you, cheers. In Paris, he will meet with a team of professionals who will make him rehearse in real life conditions. Loud music. For three intensive weeks at a cooking school, you have to get used to working in noise just like on D-Day. Alongside the Moselle candidate, a coach, Romuald Fassinet, one star chef. That's good, come on. Romuald is paid as a consultant, thanks to funding from food industry sponsors who pay out 500,000 euros to support the Frenchman throughout his training. A second coach, Johan Chapuis, supervises the hygiene and organization of the kitchen, which will count for 20% of the score. He has even set up four cameras on the work surface. When we do the debriefs, we can prove it to them. Ah, oh, well, I did that. No, you didn't. Look. And it helps to keep the work surface organized and clean, even if it's a plate. Right now, I can see that his spatula is upside down. Is it serious if the spatula is upside down? A judge in the box, why is it upside down? For us, that's the big detail. To spice things up, six renowned chefs pay them a visit. They have volunteered to advise the tricolor cult. No, it's... He's wasting an awful lot of time and we... He's like that... The spatula. See, that's what we did in the beginning. Hot! Hot! Matthew is not impressed. He finishes both dishes on time. Bring me the cutting board, please. The result is quite different from his restaurant's sauerkraut. Wait, we're good to go. Chartreuse of oyster mousse and coal-fired cauliflower with oyster jelly pearls. And those famous buis pletzel with horseradish to accompany a haute couture handbag-style rack of veal. Super, excellent. Horseradish adds freshness to it.
With these creations, the French are hoping to get more than fifth place, like they got two years ago. Mathieu. It's been the juice great. Really? Thank you. D-Day, 5.30 in the morning. Each team brings its own utensils. For the rest, the competitors are on equal terms. Ovens and fridges are provided. The products come from the same wholesaler, the scallops, as well as the rack of veal. Guys, don't put anything on top. Three-star American chef Mathieu and his team arrived in Lyon a week ago to recover from jet lag. They flew in their equipment by cargo plane. How are you feeling, Robert? I'm okay. Not too stressed? A little. It's great to be back here. This is the 12th time. 20 minutes to go. Let's go. Each team is assisted by a French and an English-speaking student. Teams are drawn by lot. Julian, a culinary arts graduate, is going to work with the Americans. You stop when I tell you to. You clean the utensils and put them back. Don't mix these up. This is a measuring cup. Are you happy, Julian? On the right, Mimi, on the right. Okay, right. Five and a half hours of competition, without a break. Mathieu cuts the veal in front of an impressed jury. And his wife, Lorraine, who's flown in from California on this occasion. I've never seen anything like that. He's really very focused. To be honest, I was getting tired of hearing about it. But when you see the result, it's very impressive. As for Mathieu, he can count on the support of his colleagues. Until the final whistle. Right on schedule. It's now up to the Americans to reveal the secret they've been keeping. A chartreuse rosette with vegetable petals. The deliberations of the 26 jurors promise to be surprising. On the top step of the podium, Denmark, with this chartreuse of green apples, Romanesco cabbage and scallops. Mathieu end up in sixth place. His viewers Pledzler were deemed too simple. But he still won the prize for the most beautiful starter. A lot of great things have happened to us and great meetings with my coaches, with everything. It was a really exceptional two days. All I can say is thank you again to Mr. Paul for creating this competition because it's been a real thrill. A cold shower for the Americans, however. Mimi and Mathieu came ninth. Nice technique, but lacks flavor. How are you? I'm fine. I did my best, but I wasn't happy with myself anyway. Do you think you've made any mistakes? 
No. Then you did a good job. Mathieu heads back to San Francisco to look for a new position as a restaurant chef.